Salawat berjumpa lagi. Welcome to ASEAN Today. I'm Dalton Tanaraka of Indonesia's Metro TV at the ASEAN Secretariat in Jakarta. Sewadikrab. I'm Chairat Thumya of Thai PBS in Bangkok. This is your monthly look at the dynamic Southeast Asia region. We begin here in Thailand, where ASEAN Secretary General has been offering support to help the country rebound from devastating flooding. Surin Pisuan said confidence needed to be restored in its production and tourism sectors following the flood that shut down multinational factories and scare off visitors. During his visit in mid-December, Surin suggested utilizing international forums such as APEC, the G20 and ASEAN to publicize that Thailand is ready again for business. The flooding affected supply chains in many countries because Thailand is the region's biggest production base. It also nearly shut down the capital Bangkok before the waters began to recede. The end of the flooding also meant the reopening of an important link. Business flowed again across the Thai Myanmarese Friendship Bridge on December 12. It connects Thailand's Mesot district with Myanmar's Miawati province. Hundreds of Thai and Myanmarese residents had queued up long before authorities reopened immigration operations. This bridge is crucial to Myanmarese heading for jobs in Bangkok and nearby provinces, and Thai tourists seeking a land crossing into Myanmar use this app. Access. ASEAN ministers pushed forward a master plan for region-wide broadband access. Greater cooperation on internet use and information security was supported at the 11th ASEAN Telecommunication and Information Technology Ministers meeting in Myanmar on December 9th. Ministers agreed to jointly undertake initiatives to reach goals by 2015. They include the seamless and affordable use of broadband across ASEAN, along with better connectivity to schools. Indonesians lit up a recent Saturday night to claim a new world record. This was the largest torch parade ever, according to the Guinness Book, with 3,690 people participating on December 10th. The self-help business group Freedom Faithnet Global organized this event with people from 50 countries. Jadi sebagai bangsa Indonesia kita merasa berkontribusi, merasa bangga mengharumkan nama Indonesia. Bangsa internasional secara positif. Norway held the previous record with 1256 people marching in what was the world's longest torchlit parade. An important source of raw material in Japanese products comes from the forests of Malaysia. As in today's Selda Sawitri reports on how the charcoal industry must balance the exports with conservation. Tropical Malaysia produces a high-grade charcoal sourced from large expanses of redwood trees. Perak on the west coast of Malaysia is home to more than 300 charcoal factories situated near a 41,000 hectare redwood forest. The industry is a colonial legacy left by the occupying Japanese in World War II. There remains a village named Mitsui from the name of a Japanese charcoal company operating back then. Fifty of Perak's charcoal businesses are located around Mitsui. He Chun has been in the business for 30 years. He says the Japanese government turned over the charcoal industry to the Malaysian government in 1965, but has seen a return of Japanese presence beginning in the 1980s. More than 60% of the best smokeless redwood charcoal is exported to Japan. Also shipped are carbon acid distillate and other byproducts used in Japan's cosmetic and beverage industries. But the financial rewards have come at a cost. The industry has consumed a significant portion of Malaysia's forests. As a result, the Malaysian government was forced to take action in 2006 by reducing the cutting while replanting the source of an important regional product. Zelda Safitri for ASEAN Today. ASEAN Today will continue shortly. 
making it internationally is a goal for many. To Indonesia's superstar Angun, coming home is what makes her nervous. We talk next. You're watching ASEAN Today, this month from Jakarta and Bangkok. I'm Thay Ratomya of Thai PBS. I'm Dalton Tanaraka of Indonesia's Metro TV. Many Asian performers dream of going international. Indonesia's biggest overseas success is a singer now based in Paris. Her name is Angun Cipta Sasmi, and she was back in Jakarta recently for a homecoming concert. And she says she was nervous. Because you know they they saw me grow in, they saw me growing up. Yeah. So it's like I'm like um, probably a member of their family. You know they called me Mbak here, Mbak Good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm 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 like that. So it's uh, it's uh, I'm actually more nervous uh, performing in Jakarta than or anywhere performing else. Performing in in Indonesia than anywhere else. Yeah. Wow. Your music, okay, your music. Now, right. you released Echoes on Sony, um, your how many, fifth, what? Album. fifth album yeah, on Sony. Yeah, Fifth International. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, where does this mm. album take the listener? Um, actually, it's some kind of voyage through um, uh, a journey about this woman, 30-something, with her. Mm, who is that? <laughs> Just a wild guess, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, it's in English. <laughs> In English, but uh, for the, uh, the 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 album that is released in here, I always you know do three or four songs in Indonesian. So, um, but yeah, it's actually an uh, autobiography in music. Sorry, an autobiography in music. That's what you say. Uh, very personal, and especially for me, I only write songs when I have things to say, um, things that are important for me to share. I mean, I talk about, uh, in this album, I, I, I don't talk about me, I talk about what happened around me, and that touches me. And uh, I talk about, uh, there's a song called uh, Year of the Snake, uh, it talks about, that was my, my worst year ever, it was in 2001. Uh, I, I had gone through personal problems, and then I realized that that wasn't only me. Um, a lot of my friends, I mean, they went through divorce, uh, people, uh, dis, uh, you know, um, family members disappearing and, 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 and things like that. And then the, 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 the biggest, I mean, at the end of the year, there was this 9-11. So uh, it was, and, and for me, I was really ready for that year to, to, to be over. And then in, it, it just, you know, occurred to me, it was the year of the snake. And, and when snake changes skin, he needs to eat everything that is around him. So we were his victim. Wow, so it was, it's kind of a downbeat song, or is it one of working through these? <clears throat> well, actually, at the chorus, I said, rising, learning from our mistakes in that year of the snake, when everything turns into heartbreak. So, you know, there's always something very positive uh, out of negativity. Angun, are you a better artist, a better performer right now than ever before? I hope so, because <laughs> otherwise then I wouldn't learn anything. <laughs> okay, no, but sometimes you say, well, no, my best years were this, and I was better then, but ah. I mean, are you getting better and better? Uh, I, I think technically, uh, in terms of singing, I don't work that much anymore, uh, and I'm, I'm not that interested in, in perfecting vocal I'm, I'm more interested in um, interpreting songs and the way you put soul in it you put something that is b believable so that you can actually that I can actually touch someone someone else's heart that is more important for me than just like a vocal <laughs> like that you know <laughs> the Mariah Carey style okay well uh, Mariah Carey would yeah but so you're, you're saying you're you're probably better now than ever in being able to deliver a message. And, yeah, and, and then uh, I'm probably uh, more mature in my writings. 
that's you know um, I'm working on. And it. I, no, and I think that's evident in your in your in your album. Now, let's talk a little bit about your background for those who are just meeting you, and there are many new fans all of the time. Course. Yeah. Okay, you were, you were born in Jakarta, and yes. there were some people who said, no, Jogja, no, Jakarta. You were born in Jakarta. Jakarta. Um, but where is your kampung? Where do you go home to when you come <laughs> home? I mean, where, where is home? Jakarta, but no, Jakarta, I can barely, you know, well, I can barely recognize it. There's so many streets, there's so many malls, there's still not <laughs> one concert hall, but lots. No, the problem lots. is there's the same amount of streets, but just tons more people. Yeah, that's but <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. More ASEAN Today is coming up shortly. We will profile the world's longest reigning king. And then we take a quickie tour of Vietnam, where tasty food is a definite attraction. This is ASEAN Today, the monthly program on the world's most dynamic region. And we are coming to you this month from Jakarta and Bangkok. He was born in America, composed jazz, and is the most loved person in Thailand. King Pumipon Adulayadet celebrated his 84th birthday on December 5th with words that lifted the country's mood. ASEAN Today's Marisa Anita profiles the king. The world's longest reigning monarch is seen as a stabilizing force in Thailand. So his birthday appearance helped give Thais the heart to weather a rough year. He was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts in the United States, the third and youngest child of the Royal Highnesses Prince and Princess Mahidol of Songkla. He studied abroad in Switzerland, acquiring a lifelong affection for jazz. His life would change when he received the news of the unexpected death of King Ananda Mahidol on June 9, 1946, his older brother. Upon returning to Thailand as the new king, he set out to meet the people of his country. He traveled to all parts of Thailand, seeking to hear directly of his citizens' needs and problems. That immediately endeared the new ruler to his fellow countrymen, and they would never forget that. He's needed his people's well wishes more than ever in recent years. The king has made few public appearances since he was hospitalized in September 2009 for a lung problem. At one point, reports say he went into a shock and fell unconscious. But he emerged from the hospital to give a speech from the balcony of Chakri Throne Hall. It was a dramatic moment as the king called for unity following devastating floods that disrupted lives throughout the country. <laughs> โดยเฉพาะคณะนี้ประชาชนกำลังเดือดร้อนลำบากจากน้ำพุ่มจึงขอจึงชอบที่จะร่วมมือกันปัดเป่าแก้ไข it was what the crowd and the entire country needed to hear. 
After the short address, the king returned to the hospital, cheered by the massive crowd of Thais who held his portrait over their heads. Marissa Anita for ASEAN Today. Here are several events on the ASEAN calendar. The Royal Flora Ratchaburg Fair is held in Thailand from December 14th to March 14th to celebrate the birthdays of three other royal family members. Lively drum beats will be heard in the Philippines during Kalibo's Ati Ati Han Festival 2012 from January 9th to the 15th. And Ballet Revolution will be staged at the Esplanade Theater in Singapore on January 10th. Vietnam is fast becoming one of Southeast Asia's trendy travel spots. ASEAN Today's Barbara Ulrich gives us a quick tour with three good reasons to visit. Vietnam, the easternmost country on the Indochina Peninsula. The first stop in Ho Chi Minh City is a religious one. The Notre Dame Cathedral is a replica of the one in France. It was built in the 1800s with all material imported, the red bricks coming from Marseille. Gothic and Roman style architecture was used like the original. Twin towers rise up 190 feet, capturing the interest of people strolling by. In 2005, this Virgin Mary statue in front of the church appeared to shed tears, which caused a sensation. From religion to business, where the production of distinctive Vietnamese lacquer art is visual treat. This requires highly skilled craftsmen taking 40 steps with 20 different techniques. This female artist took two years to learn how to produce a piece. This painting utilizes duck egg shells. The price of one creation can run as much as $5,500. Now it's time to eat and Vietnamese food has become popular throughout the world. Nothing like getting it fresh from sources like this food stall. One specialty is bang seo or sizzling cake. It's a fried pancake made of rice flour, stuffed with slivers of fatty pork, diced shrimp, green onion, and bean sprouts. It's served wrapped in a mustard leaf, lettuce or rice paper, and complemented by mint leaves and basil. Dip it in a savory fish sauce for a heavenly bite. Rasanya tuh rame, karena daun-daunnya sendiri tuh juga punya khas rasa yang masing-masing terus dicampur dengan martabak ini. Enak kok. Sehat nih makan seperti ini. It's easy to see why tourism is growing in Vietnam. Foreign arrivals are expected to increase 12% in 2012. Barbara Ulri for ASEAN Today. We like to get your feedback on ASEAN Today. We got this tweet from Becky in Indonesia. I'm definitely watching Uncle Dalton Tanaraka. Appreciate that, Becky. Another tweet came from Molina. I enjoy ASEAN Today. Open your ears, everyone, and your eyes. Let us know what you're thinking. You can email us at aseantoday.tv at gmail.com, post something on our Facebook page, or tweet us at aseantodaytv. From Vietnam to Malaysia. The children of Southeast Asia put on choir show in Kuala Lumpur on December 11th. This music event featured more than 400 young people from ASEAN countries and others such as China and Japan. It was a day to showcase differences and similarities in song and dance. ASEAN leaders believe the involvement of children in art is a platform for peace as well as playing an important role in human development. And it's fun. And that is this month's edition of ASEAN Today. Terima kasih. I'm Dalton Tanaraka of Indonesia's Metro TV in Jakarta. Thank you. I'm Chai Rat Thomya of Thai PBS in Bangkok. Please join us again next month.